Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to Professor, Associate Professor, Dr. Sir and Madam. Please welcome our speaker which are Muhammad, Mr. Hafiz Ismail. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a wonderful moment and on behalf of the Deep Learning and Machine Learning Re Intelligent Research Interest Group, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for having all of you in this fruitful sharing session. Thank you for your time. First, let me introduce myself. I am Muhammad Nazwan, responsible as a moderator in this wonderful sharing session. Uh, before that, um, before I continue, may I ask, uh, is my audio is okay? Someone can help to write in the chat. Is it my my voice and my word is very clear, is it? Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay, we continue. Huh? In this sharing session, we are going to have two speakers to share their research on the deep learning and machine intelligence research area. And the interesting part, we have uh, interactive activities, which you will be able to sketch a mango nicely with the neural network. From my experience, I, I also could draw a nice mango, although uh, I'm back in drawing. We hope that you, have a, uh, you will give your fully contribution during the interactive activities because there is some prize uh, prepared for these activities. Please enjoy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, uh, I would like to invite our first speaker, which is Mr. Muhammad Hafiz Ismail. Okay, uh, Mr. Muhammad Hafiz Ismail is a lecturer and a researcher from a Faculty of Computer and Mathematical Science, University Technology Mara, Perlis Branch, Malaysia. He obtained his first degree in data communications and network and his master degree in information technology. His primary research interest is mobile and pervasive computing and is actively involved in mobile technology solution in his community. With all due respect, please welcome Mr. Muhammad Afiz. Okay, Mr. Muhammad Afiz, the stage is yours. Thank you. Hello and uh, good morning. So uh, my name is Muhammad Afiz and I'm from, uh, I'm a lecturer and also a researcher from UC Technology Mara, UITM Perlis and uh, apologize a little bit. I've uh, been uh, affected with a bit of uh, influenza, so my voice haven't been uh, recovered yet. So please bear with me. I try to speak a little bit uh, slowly and try to pace myself. So if I'm too fast, um, uh, you can uh, try and uh, ask question <clears throat> or try to make me clarify certain things. So uh, hopefully you can see my slide. Okay, uh, so I'm trying to share this. Okay, I try to swap the presentation setting. <clears throat> so uh, here are my slides. Okay, uh, sharing session, uh, our experience with deep learning in uh, Mango Research. So, <clears throat> so uh, as an introduction, we are a relatively new research interest group, uh, which is formed about uh, three years ago in 2009. So we have acquired about uh, three national fundamental research grants uh, related to Mango Research. They are also at the FRGS, but the, uh, one of them is not related to agriculture or mango research and also to internal research grant. <clears throat> so this is some of our researchers uh, that are related to agriculture and mango research. So there are two types of mangoes that we studied primarily <clears throat> uh, to cultivar. Uh, we call it cultivar of mango uh, that is popular in northern uh, state in Malaysia. We have... Uh, uh, Perlis Sunshine Mango <clears throat> and also Harumanis Mango. Uh, so this is some of our research. We uh, Part of it uh, is also joined by Mr. Nazwan, uh, which is our moderator. So we have uh, multi-spectral sensors uh, and then 
we also involved in segmentation model in localizing uh, but we look into an innovative way to segment and localizing and identifying uh, defects on mango fruit okay uh, and so uh, on the leaf and also uh, agronomic pra uh, practices or benefits of uh, harmonies <clears throat> right Okay, as I've already clarified before, uh, we are sharing our experience in using deep learning in solving problem in our research or applying it in our research. We also like to demonstrate our generative deep learning architecture to the audience. Uh, there will be a hand, hands-on section or uh, I would like to say it as an um, interactive segment. So there will be some... Uh, 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 some prizes uh, to be to be won for those who stayed and take part with our interactive uh, segment and then uh, we will also introduce the data set produced by our uh, deep learning architecture or during the course of our researches <clears throat> so what we will not cover for today is uh, the meaning of artificial intelligence the introduction of machine learning <clears throat> right okay and then uh, introduction or what is the meaning of deep learning or artificial neural network okay this one we will not cover so i will not cover this because uh, it is fairly uh, basic um, uh, basic explanation and i think most of you who have joined this sharing session have already familiarized themselves with uh, machine learning deep learning artificial neural network and so on and then i don't think I will be discussing in depth about uh, the differences between regression, classification, time series, prediction, clustering, and so on. So uh, we will not cover this. Okay, we will not cover this. So what we will discuss about is just our experience, <clears throat> our difficulty in obtaining real world samples within agricultural setting, which <clears throat> may or may not affect you when you are doing your research. Uh, within agricultural set setting, we are um, a cross-discipline uh, researcher, group of researcher, and we face a lot of uh, obstacles uh, within uh, our research when we are studying um, uh, agricultural uh, sector, okay, within the agricultural sector with like uh, obtaining samples or the time uh, to analyze the samples and so on. And then... Um, <clears throat> we would like to discuss our experience and how we use deep learning in order to solve uh, some of uh, that problem or to make it easier for us to proceed with our research uh, for that problem and uh, some of our contribution uh, to the research community at large uh, based on uh, deep learning. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, and then we will also discuss about our effort in building the Mango data set. Okay, there are two prime uh, Mango data set that we have built. Uh, one that concern about the um, Harumanis Mango data set. And then also Pearly Sunshine or Manga Sala. Sometimes it's known as about Manga Sala Cultivar. So we have two primary uh, Mango, Manga Sala and Harumanis. And uh, we detail our effort in building the Mango data set which also leads to the development of the Generative Adversarial Network uh, or GAN architecture for our specific purpose. <clears throat> so why the Generative Adversarial Model? <clears throat> so Generative Adversarial Model is a form of um, specific uh, deep neural architecture uh, which uh, is used to produce uh, synthetic data. Okay, mainly because we want to use it to synthesize new data from the data set and also to imagine a new data from data or interpret. So, um, uh, generative adversarial network can also be used to creatively interpret data in a new light. So, you fit it with uh, features or a, a photograph or... or or uh, an image, it will try to reconstruct back the image uh, uh, almost uh, uh, creatively, uh, almost as if creatively. It's not creative, but almost creatively. Uh, in other means, it is uh, it synthesizes new data, so it sometimes it's much more closely resemble on how human try to rationalize data or try to. 
um, extract the data. Okay, try to do uh, information extraction. Uh, try to extract the data. <coughs> so, uh, in our experience, we use the gun in two ways of our research as a feature extractor, extractor, and segmentation model. <clears throat> and also as a generative model to solve problem in an unbalanced mango data set uh, within an uh, agricultural setting. <clears throat> so uh, now um, I'm uh, trying to explain to you several concepts of generative adversarial network for extracting mango features. So uh, certainly a little bit about uh, generative adversarial network <clears throat> to those who are not familiar. <clears throat> I, because I will not be explain, explaining about the... Uh, deep learning, uh, basic deep learning, I'll be choosing uh, to explain about generative adversarial network. So the type of uh, generative adversarial network that we use in our research is a conditional generative adversarial network or we call it uh, GAN, okay, C-GAN. <clears throat> it is a form of image-to-image -image translation, which uh, in our first uh, form of research, we use it to translate and extract mango defect features. So uh, some of you may have already familiar with UNET architecture <clears throat> for extracting uh, features. Or some of you may uh, already use a certain uh, image extraction technique like Haas Cascade or... <clears throat> <clears throat> or non-deep learning type of uh, extraction to extract features. But uh, in our case, we are exploring a new way to extract the features in by using GAN, okay, Conditional Adversarial Network. So, um, okay, introduction to GAN, Generative Adversarial Network, it is an implicit generative model which uh, consists of two competing deep neural network, okay, we, it consists of generator, which gener generates uh, candidate samples, and also discriminator, which evaluates the samples. So the goal is to generate synthetic samples which are indistinguishable from the authentic data. So we are trying to generate a synthetic data or synthetic image. So the users, uh, why we are the users of GAN is important within uh, uh, agricultural setting and sometimes in educational setting or research setting, well, which we, I, I will explain after this. <clears throat> so this is how uh, a basic uh, generative adversary model works. So you try to uh, generate uh, uh, synthetic data or fake data from noise. So the starting point would be just some noise and it try to compare it with uh, real data. So this process would repeat and repeat uh, through the back propagation and the cycle would repeat until <clears throat> finally the generator could generate a sample which is indistinguishable from uh, real data. So uh, there are many forms of generative adversarial network uh, out there like uh, uh, there are also a data set that concern about fake celebrity. <clears throat> Right, fake celebrity or fake uh, faces or generated faces. We use generative adversarial network or deep learning <clears throat> and feed it with uh, real world data. And then the deep learning uh, network or the generative adversarial network will try to imagine or synthesize a new image, right? A new image. <clears throat> so this is what we have a uh, fake celebs uh, data set so if you search nowadays uh, if you want to use uh, faces uh, data set uh, for your own research and if you do not do not want to violate anybody privacy or be accused of uh, copyright uh, issues so you can use the fake celebs uh, data set these are the faces that are being generated by the generative adversarial network or deep learning which uh, do not correspond to any uh, single individual. <clears throat> so we also have uh, other form like fake cats. So, um, however, um, there are limitation of generative adversarial network. So it limit limited to its own data set. So if you have a small data set, then the sample that is generated will not be complete. So you need a very large data set, a big data sort of a data set. You need uh, uh, to have uh, hundreds of gigabytes of data set. 
Uh, so this is some of the limitation of generative adversarial network. In order for it to be um, useful, you need to have uh, hundreds. So um, for the earlier form of generative adversarial network, you have no other input beside initial seed. But <clears throat> so, but uh, in our research, we have used uh, another form of generative adversarial network uh, called conditional. Uh, Gun. So this conditional gun allow us to input our own uh, uh, parameter, okay? So that we can set uh, our own uh, parameter to fit in inside the network, and it can uh, generate a sample that based on our required parameter. So uh, I will show you afterwards on how our generator can generate a uh, a mango based on your specification, whether you want to choose its color or its shape or its defect. So this can be done um, uh, throughout uh, some slider, okay, using a slider or using a parameter. So you can control uh, the generation process. Okay? You can control the generation process, you can control the parameter so that you can generate a sample that based on that uh, parameter. <coughs> So uh, for the earlier form of generative adversary network, we have very little control over the output of GAN. Uh, so we use, that's why uh, in our research, we use conditional GAN. So in conditional GAN, uh, we can uh, set our parameter uh, to produce certain sample. We can influence the GAN uh, to produce certain sample, whether you want uh, a cost style like uh, more on the background or a little bit of a middle style or a subtle, okay, subtle, okay, a subtle uh, changes or color of the skin and so on. So this one, we have done it uh, over the mangoes uh, samples. So uh, for the conditional gun, we uh, have been able to generate sample based on hints or conditional as additional input. <clears throat> this conditional can direct the data generation process, thus we have some control over the the process. So we have an uh, image to image translation uh, for this uh, type of uh, research that we have done. So we call it pix to pix or image to image translation. So we can generate uh, a synthetic image based on the input image. So good input uh, would produce good output and works in pair. So I try to show you a little bit about uh, conditional gun where you can input satellite image and then you could uh, output a map so you can translate directly so we will uh, look this into our interactive uh, session so it can generate a road map uh, without any form of human intervention so uh, uh, this also goes for the uh, conditional gun that we have built <clears throat> so we have an input and then it uh, produce an output it could recognize uh, main roads and then uh, rivers and it could generate the maps automatically <clears throat> and then it can also create um, day and night uh, photo so from night photo it could uh, brighten up the the scene which can be used in, in self-driving car or in uh, cctv Okay, it could brighten up uh, the pixel and try to generate uh, the image as if it is uh, daylight. So it can generate realistic daytime photo from the nighttime photo. So, okay, it could colorize the photo and so on. <clears throat> right, um, okay, it can also uh, have uh, an application of pixel pick gun. It, it, is, uh, uh, it can use uh, sketches to generate. Uh, a realistic sketch which uh, many as uh, uh, some of you may have already uh, familiar with right you have input and then you output uh, the target so this is some of the classic example of uh, image to, uh, image translation uh, conditional gun all right uh, next we look into our specific uh, research <clears throat> so why we use uh, conditional gun and mango uh, features extraction because we want try to do a fast defect assessment Right, fast defect assessment. So, um, usually how do you determine the defect in the mango? So, why we need to defend a uh, defect in mango? So, mango uh, defect uh, assessment is important because, largely because uh, when we are to market uh, a fruit, especially a mango, 
people would associate the quality with its skin. So if the mango skin have defects, so the quality would be lower <clears throat> and it will be less de desirable. So the easiest way to determine the defect is by visual examination. So in imperfection, the mango is usually detectable based on the outer uh, appearance of the skin and bruises are clear indication of the defects caused by uh, several types of damage, either impact, mechanical or pest attack. Okay. Why we need to look into conditional gun? Uh, it is because the currently available uh, segmentation model, which uh, can be used to isolate the defects, isolate the defects, and also extract the skin features, are uh, a little bit too rigid. <clears throat> the meaning is too rigid is that sometimes it uh, count by pixel, so it too rigid. It is not uh, that natural, like uh, how a human would perceive the damage. So usually when the human perceives the damage, it does it in a fuzzy way. So they, they take a look of uh, a mango, right? A mango, it take a look at mango. And then it just, uh, they would just, a human would just inspect the mango and then, oh, this is not acceptable and this is acceptable and how much damage uh, it has. So we want to develop a model that uh, almost approximate human expert or a human perception. So we still want to estimate uh, the size of affected area, but we want to do it in a fuzzy way because it relates to uh, our group research uh, that involved in fuzzy uh, expert system and also with explainable, uh, explainable AI, XAI. <clears throat> So this is some of the ideal mango uh, data set. So, so uh, this is from the perspective of a human. So when they try to inspect the mango, usually they will hand, uh, handle it using the hand and then look at the skin. So this is one of the uh, sample type of ideal. This is a form of mango sala <clears throat> or pearly sunshine uh, mango cultivar. And then this one is a mango that have a uh, present of defect. Okay, defect. So, uh, as a human, you only would look this at a, at a glance, okay? You already know which type of defect uh, which is present, whether it is uh, by mechanical bruises or attacked by pests like this, or mis mishandling during uh, transportation, okay? And any expert would know, uh, know about that. And then for most of human, uh, some of the bruises are acceptable like this one, which is uh, a, a form of uh, pest uh, inside it but uh, it's still acceptable. But how does uh, uh, something uh, in between, okay, right, uh, acceptable? So this is why uh, a fuzzy uh, system would come in handy. But before we fit it into a fuzzy system, we need a feature extraction model which could be fed into a fuzzy system. <clears throat> so the presently available feature extraction like uh, segmentation model are too rigid. So when it's too rigid, when we fit it into the fuzzy system, it would be, it would have a lot of tuning. So our goal uh, for our research uh, in this uh, grant is to simplify feature extraction so that it would appro uh, more, more approximately how human would perceive. Yeah, right, okay. So you can uh, estimate the area of defect by determining the type of defect and determine if the defect area is acceptable. So it's just uh, just like this, okay? Okay, this one is also a sample of uh, previous uh, uh, research about uh, semantic segmentation, but we are not going to do this, okay? This is uh, a sample of UNET architecture, but we are not going to do this. This is also a bit rigid. And then we are also not doing uh, object detection. So what we are, are going to do is that we are trying to represent <clears throat> a mango uh, defect in a feature map just like this but this feature map is a special feature map it's not uh, the same uh, type of feature map that are present inside uh, convolutional neural network that involve in uh, like uh, sorry like a mobile net or inception net but this is one that are generated with uh, conditional um, conditional generative uh, adversarial network okay this one 
uh, much more abstract. Okay, much more abstract, much more uh, approximate how human would see. <clears throat> so in our solution, we try to map the mango feature to a simplified grid representation. So we have uh, this grid representation and we try to simplify it so that we have a conditional pair of these two uh, mango uh, images fit it uh, in the side near uh, the discrimin uh, discriminator and then we try to generate the mango map okay damage map okay damage map so that it could, could produce something like this so it would, could map uh, a damage area <clears throat> so this damage area will be fed into a fuzzy system where it could be used in an explainable AI interface or in a system that uh, much more approximate how human would represent uh, damage or uh, semantic segmentation in uh, mango. Alright, okay, in this case, the area of defect can be determined immediately in a faster way. Assuming that we have a faster uh, hardware, but uh, this is just an exploration. Right? Exploration, so it's not uh, to be used kindly in a production, but it is part of the production, larger production system that may use uh, <coughs> a fuzzy system. Okay, fuzzy inference system, fuzzy system. Okay, this is also another semantic segmentation. So this is type of damage of past damage which can be highlighted in red uh, within the quadrant, right? Where type of def uh, the effect can be in, uh, identified like past damage and so on. <clears throat> so the advantage of uh, this uh, solution is a faster way to extract features. So we can identify type of damage and the grid serve uh, as a rough estimate of fruit condition, which can uh, estimate area of defects. Right, uh, and can also be used as an input to other machine learning model for fruit, uh, for fruit grading and appeal factor. <clears throat> right, uh, this is uh, actually our output of uh, the output of our research. So to be fed with a fuzzy system. So for the fuzzy system, uh, I think Dr. Tajul is uh, an expert uh, in fuzzy system, which uh, we use this an, as an intermediary in order to feed it inside the fuzzy system. All right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> we have a little break over here. Okay, we have an, an interactive segment, but uh, it's still uh, uh, a way for you to try our model, <laughs> our model for uh, gener uh, generating uh, mango. So uh, remember back what we've, uh, uh, what I've uh, discussed to you about, okay, how we can change these uh, uh, features, certain features to uh, influence how an image are being generated. So we have uh, created an uh, interactive uh, demo, uh, example of our generative adversary model to generate um, a mango. So we can change the parameter to generate an appropriate mango. So I will share to you the demo uh, right now. Okay. So I will try to share it uh, in the chat session. All right. Okay. You can try it. Okay. Now, uh, before I try it, make sure that you try it inside a computer desktop, uh, desktop or laptop computer. Okay. Do not try it in your mobile device. I've already coded it so that it won't uh, work on mobile device because it, it uses a little bit of uh, 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 computing, uh, computational power. All right. Okay. It will use it uh, a little bit of computational power. So let's look at the demonstration. Oh, oh I cannot. Uh, okay, I think I, I must stop the video or... Okay, I can access the chat. Okay. Alright, okay, I've shared the chat. You can try the demo. So the demo would look like something like this. <clears throat> okay, this one we have built it using our data set. So which data set you can read more in the synthetic harmonics uh, mango image generator. So you can uh, generate uh, a mango. So randomly you can generate. <clears throat> so it will take some time uh, for your computer to generate uh, for it to uh, download the, the model. So depending on your network condi uh, condition. Mm. 
So if you have a uh, your network uh, ready, oh, okay, this one is not not ready yet. So if you have your network ready, uh, you can run it. <coughs> so I try to run a local model first. So we are. I'm having trouble with the network connection. Uh, connection usually uh, do not have a. This sort of uh, uh, problem. Okay. All right. Okay. So the demo, if you can run it, uh, so I'm going to demo it. So you can uh, generate a model over here. So it could. Okay. It could generate a. Uh, how to manage image so this is not actually a real uh, fruit okay it's not a real mango but it is a generated uh, okay a generated fruit that is generated okay generated uh, by generative adversarial network so it's synthetic okay the another word is synthetic so you can also try the tunable standard model so tunable standard model means that you can control the size or the features of the Haromane mango that are being produced. So this is the parameter. So for example, if you control the TUV XYZ uh, parameter over here, you can generate uh, a Haromane mango with a more pronounced beak. So we can try experiment it. So so we can we can generate it okay right we can control how the harmonious mango uh, are being generated and then you can save uh, you can also save the the image right save the image right you can save the image uh, accordingly so we can change uh, the interactive uh, element so so you can design or actually generate any sort of uh, uh, mango uh, that you like. So according all according to the control parameter. So this is what uh, we call it as a generative model. So uh, why uh, this sort of generative model is important? Because we want to solve a problem of imbalanced data set, which uh, I will explain it in another slide. <clears throat> So a problem uh, within agricultural research is that the difficulty of obtaining certain samples of um, uh, data set. So for this uh, research and our previous research, we have to obtain a lot of samples. So how a lot of samples that we have to obtain? So when you look in, in our own data set, we have to obtain about 662 uh, images of Arumanis, um fruit which is not available uh, anywhere so the problem is that uh, which is that uh, how we are going to obtain a quality data set and then when we have already uh, obtained a quality data set sometimes we want to do or train uh, the data set according to the damages okay according to the damages or the defect that we want to uh, to create which is are not present in the real world data set right <clears throat> sometimes when we go to orchards right we go to the markets uh, to obtain the samples we want to look into certain data set that contain certain defects such as pest attack defects but these uh, data set are very hard to get okay very hard to get whether we want it specifically so this is why uh, the generative adversary network is uh, very important because we want to generate uh, this type of data set <clears throat> and then the mango generated are uh, uh, mostly uh, indistinguishable from okay ini dia nampak rupa harum manis eh? <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, from the uh, real images so if you want to read more about this you can go to about okay I explain all about uh, uh, this demo <clears throat> so we can click so why we came up with demo this is a sample of a uh, sample of uh, generated image that uh, I've pre-produced so this is not real uh, images. These are all generated images, uh, including the shading and the lighting environment and so on. And then the data set that uh, we used to produce these um, generative adversary network uh, synthetic image are published. 
so you can have a look, have a gander. So this is reproducible uh, work, so we can uh, look uh, look inside it. So this is uh, one uh, session of our interactive uh, demo, uh, okay, right? One session of our interactive demo. <clears throat> I understand sometimes uh, some of you may not be able to access this demo because uh, of the lack of internet connection. Uh, don't worry, you can find something uh, somewhere that are uh, uh, internet connection that are okay, then you can look into the chat, okay, uh, and revisit back the chat, uh, the chat URL, or you can save the chat URL that I've uh, shared in the, uh, okay, in the chat, uh, so that you can uh, revisit back uh, when you have a good internet connection, <clears throat> right? Okay. Right, uh, for the next um, uh, slide, I would look into another of our research, which about uh, problem, our problem with uh, obtaining an imbalanced data set. Okay, this one, we found it uh, occurring in um, both uh, mango cellular cultivar and also harumanis. So we have to train the network uh, uh, in order to recognize certain type of defects. But that certain type of defects are very difficult to obtain in the real world. So we sometimes have to simulate that defect. Uh, so that's why we have to simulate the bruise and defect. So it's not that difficult. Sometimes we need about 600 samples, but when we go out in the real world, uh, no matter where we go, uh, at most we can only obtain about 100 or 200 samples, which is not enough. Sometimes we need about 600 at the very minimum. And now we have about, we need to generate about 1,000 uh, of the sample images to simulate that kind of bruises in order to create a good classification uh, algorithm uh, in order to automate uh, our farming system. Okay, this is also holds true when you are using a fuzzy system. So, <clears throat> the problem is that sometimes you have uh, data. Okay, you have access to the, the to to the data. You have access to a good a governmental agency uh, that can provide you data. But, however, sometimes uh, it's very difficult to get the data that you want. Okay. The well balanced data set, okay, the data that you want. Sometimes you want uh, uh, data that present with certain defects, but what the agency presented to you is a near perfect uh, sample, okay, a near perfect specimen. So we do not want a real near perfect specimen because we want to train it to detect defects. <clears throat> so this is why, uh, and it is our motivation to. Uh, use this generative adversary network to generate the defects so that it could be used in education or our uh, automated system in order to train uh, our um, uh, models or architecture to recognize that certain defects. Right? Yeah, it's very difficult to obtain a uh, data set for language that cover certain shapes, sizes, bruises, and color. And then this uh, might reduce the reliability in image classification and recognition tasks. So we have to use generative adversary network. <clears throat> so um, our contribution in this uh, research is that uh, we have produced a mango data set suitable for image processing problem used in gun training. So uh, in this data set, we use uh, from cult uh, Sala Cultivar. And then the image to image transition condition of gun for a generated image will surface effect in a control manner. So we try to generate it in a control manner so that we could control a type of defects that can appear on the okay on the mango okay on the mango image. So for example, when we input this data, we can produce uh, the adversary network. We produce a realistic image of this mango. Okay, we, uh, what we have to do is we have to specify the position of the defect. Okay, position of the defect. Okay, and then we can shade the defect and then it will produce the defect. Okay, it produce the defects. Right, uh, up to certain degree. So, uh, 
So this is uh, we, this came with a lot of uh, work. Okay, we have to visit a lot of orchard. Orchard. We have to find a lot of uh, samples. So we have to find uh, many types of defects that are present, which are uh, also a part of our problem in uh, obtaining a well balanced data set. And then in 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 order to produce a data set that are satisfying our requirements, right? <clears throat> so this is uh, some of our story. <clears throat> So we have uh, produced a uh, certain for our um, data set, right? Okay. So we have to fit in the original image and then we have to remove uh, the background because we, what we are going to focus is just uh, the mango and the defects itself. And then we try to sketch it. Okay. We try to sketch it. We have to use human to re-sketch back uh, or to retrace back the sketch uh, from the edges. Okay, we try to use the edges and try to enhance it with sketch. So some of the sketches are not enhanced like this. Some are enhanced by a human. So we use human enhancement because we thought that uh, this system are being used for a human to generate a mango image uh, that presents certain defects. So we want to use it inside the system that to train another system. So essentially we are producing a model that can be used to train another model that can be used to classify another defect and then can be fit, in, uh, fit into another system or another non-deep learning system like fuzzy system in order to make inference or uh, make a uh, decision or um, uh, within a reasonable uh, values. So uh, this is some of the uh, pre-processing that we done, uh, including manual retracing and so on. So this is uh, the conditional gun that we use. Okay, this is some of the parameter tuning, right? <clears throat> okay, and we can also run the result in this step. So this is step one thousand. So this is for the step three thousand. So how it uh, try to reimagine back the predicted image. This is the ground truth. And then until 10,000 steps and then 15,000 steps, uh, the predicted image will uh, almost resemble the ground truth. Right. Okay. This is the result. Okay. And then you can also, uh, in our uh, full model, we can also control the color of the mango that is produced by using an outline. <clears throat> so if you draw it using green outline, it will produce yellow uh, mango. Or we can produce uh, a mango with a part uh, discoloration, which is uh, a little bit, we mix it a little bit with yellow and with green. So it will produce uh, a green uh, colored mango with a yellow tint. Okay, with a yellow tint. Right? Okay, we can control it. <laughs> so this is what we uh, mean by an element of controllability. We can generate, uh, we can control our output. So this is also another on a yellow skin, okay, yellow skin uh, uh, gun. <clears throat> All right, okay, uh, a lightweight version of our implementation is available at this website, which I will uh, share to you uh, in uh, the chat afterwards. So, so that's uh, our sharing session, right? Eh? Okay, why we need uh, those uh, gun? So first is because we want to create a feature extractor, which is much more abstract. Okay, not that rigid abstract that approximate a human vision, which is can be fed to another system such as fuzzy system, or and then we also use gun to produce um, synthetic data so that we can create a balanced data set or can we can produce certain data uh, that present with certain defect, right? Okay, uh, certain uh, data that uh, pre uh, present with uh, certain defect so that we can produce a uh, much more robust uh, uh, deep learning system that can recognize uh, the defects evenly. Okay, with uh, much more accuracy. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, for the so for the some of the interact uh, for the interactive element, 
So we will uh, try to look into this uh, website. Uh, whether I'm going to see if uh, my uh, internet is uh, okay, still okay or not. So it's uh, take a lot of uh, internet. Okay, it seems like it's okay. All right, this is uh, okay. This is uh, another uh, of our model, online model. Uh, that uh, we have developed interactive one so I've already shared inside the chat you can uh, look at it uh, inside the chat <clears throat> so if you can load, uh, load it and you can choose uh, any model so you can uh, choose a small model if you want to load it uh, uh, fast <clears throat> so if uh, the model if your internet connection uh, is limited you may not be able to load the model in time uh, so I will have to load it through local host uh, to demonstrate it to you <clears throat> so I, I believe some of you have a faster internet connection than I am so if you have a faster internet connection uh, the status will be green over here okay the status will have a green okay we have a green uh, green color over here so if uh, if not I can look at the debug order so sometimes there is a, a protocol error over here because uh, there is a problem with the internet connection but uh, however I to demonstrate to you I will use a local host uh, implementation okay this is a local host implementation so uh, if you are able to load it uh, a even if it's a small uh, portion so you can try and load the uh, draw a mango okay on your own okay, you can draw a mango on your own and then depending on your computing uh, power so you can generate uh, the output <clears throat> see you can draw the outline and then you can generate the output so okay like this right okay you can generate the output so it depends on the your drawing the quality of your drawing uh, depends on the uh, output or if you are not inclined on drawing you can load a pre-drawn sketch pre-drawn uh, pre-drawn means that i've already loaded a uh, sketches okay sketches okay like this one so it generate so and then can load another one so this is a uh, a fake uh, mango or a generated mango and then you can add uh, bruises in uh, onto them so you can add uh, bruises and it try to approximate the the bruise of the mango okay okay this is the mini version uh, okay the full version is uh, offline uh, because it requires enormous power okay Okay, this is the mini version just to demonstrate the ability of producing uh, uh, images. So you can try a larger model. Larger model produce a much more real, uh, realistic image. So you can create a defect. Okay, you can create a lot of area of defects. So you can also test uh, test this effect on a larger scale. So you see that how it would generate. Okay. Okay, can uh, create a lot of defects. So, and then you can also generate uh, uh, outline and so on. Okay, you can also load a uh, Bruce. Uh, okay, Bruce uh, Mango. So this example, uh, Bruce Mango, and then you can also erase the some of the defect and see how the mango would look without the defect. For example, like this, you can use a brush type erase. Can erase. Okay, erase. <clears throat> so why uh, sometimes this is important because sometimes we want to uh, create a data set okay a data set that contains certain defect uh, for training in our other model and then imagine that you can also use it in uh, engineering <clears throat> so sometimes in engineering you have to teach uh, some uh, some people about stresses on metal or pro problem on defects on uh, construction which are sometimes not present but you need to show them also how do you create uh, such uh, synthetic uh, defects so you can use generated adversary model 
So you can simulate the defects and then you can link it with a gaming system. So gaming, we, yeah, you have physics system. Physics will try to bang on the sheet of metal and then it will produce uh, the defects that can be generated using generative adversary model, uh, which is an interesting way uh, to apply this uh, uh, generative model. So, okay, this one is uh, the mango without the defects, right? Then you can uh, redraw back uh, certain uh, defects, right? You can redraw back certain defects. So it's up to you, okay? It's up to you uh, to draw it, <coughs> right? Okay, this is a uh, uh, very interesting, eh? And then you can save the image, and then produce it, okay? So very easy and simple to use. That uh, is. Uh, I made it available uh, to be shared uh, with all of you. So, um, <clears throat> okay, what you need you need is actually a faster internet connection. So, I've already included instruction is that uh, your network must be at least thirty megabit per second. So now, uh, in my university, uh, because of the first week of the class, the network connectivity is lower. Right, if you want to know more about this uh, project, I've already included an explanation in the about pages, which you can click. So I explain everything that needs to know. If you want to refer it or you want to cite it, you can cite it over here. I even included the data set that is used to generate this uh, demo online. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that you can refer. So these are one uh, created with uh, TensorFlow and Crust uh, using uh, TensorFlow um, <coughs> TensorFlow JavaScript library. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've disclosed everything uh, over here and then it can be implemented. You can also implement uh, implement it. And the goal is that uh, is reproducibility. Okay. Reproducibility. So we want to reproduce it. <clears throat> Alright, okay. Uh, next, uh, probably I, I can pass it to Mr. Nazwan. I think we have another interactive element which is about uh, if, uh, if your, okay, if your internet is permitting, probably you can go to this website. Uh, okay, to, to this website so that you can take part in a uh, sort of, uh, Okay, sort of uh, mini competition, <laughs> mini competition. It's more like uh, fun, fun activity. <clears throat> right. Okay, I'm uh, sharing with you the URL. Okay, URL over here. Okay, a new URL. Okay, uh, a draw submit URL. Hopefully your internet connection is okay. So you can uh, take part. So the thing is that I want you to draw a mango. Generate it, and then you press another generate uh, generate so that uh, the neural network will try to evaluate your drawing whether your drawing is good, average, or bad, and then fill in your name, email, and phone number and submit it. So there will be prizes at the end of the next session at the end of this webinar. Okay, there will be prizes if you take part. So try and use if you your connection permitting. So I think we can allocate about uh, uh, 10 minutes, I think. Uh, Mr. Nazwan, okay. Is it okay for you? We can overlap it with Q&A. Uh, yes, okay. yes. Okay, we can overlap it with Q&A. So about 10 minutes or so, right? Uh, you can try to draw and then generate uh, the output and then fill in your name, phone number, and then press submit. So the model here cannot be loaded because... Uh, I have a very slow internet connection, but if you are lucky, you can have a fast internet connection and can generate your own mango. You can see your marks over here, evaluation marks. And then we, if you're satisfied, you can submit. And then those who get the highest mark will get uh, a mystery, mystery prizes. All right, mystery prizes. All right, okay, uh, now time for q and I guess. Uh, if anything, anyone want to ask? So hopefully uh, it's very beneficial to you. Sorry for my raspy voice. Uh, I still uh, haven't recovered uh, fully from my uh, laryngitis. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, so we open for the Q&A for question and answer. If anyone that interested some of the uh, want to know about the gun itself, so you may ask uh, Mr. Hafiz. 
uh, you can write at the chat or you can just uh, unmute your uh, microphone. We shall wait for five to ten minutes. Okay. No. Okay, you can. Okay, Safi. I have one question, Safi. Mm. Instead of uh, agriculture, is there any other field that we can use for the gun to generate the data? Uh, it's not uh, uh, just uh, limited to agriculture. It also have uh, users in other fields too, such as engineering or um, medical <clears throat> or in uh, in the field of marketing or in the field of um, banking. Also, uh, we can have a generative adversary network. But uh, for visualization, <clears throat> I think the most obvious one is in uh, engineering because we can simulate, uh, simulate certain features uh, that are not present before uh in our data set and then uh if uh, you are going specific to the defects there are a lot of defects that we can use uh we can generate or at least we can train uh, inside uh material okay um it can also be used in chemical chemistry so where where you can draw out certain molecules uh in uh in the equation and then it could uh, generate the appropriate uh, chemical uh, colors or uh, features that that you wanted it to be <clears throat> so especially this is useful uh, if you want to uh, augment the data set or actually we want to use it as uh, an educational tool or if we want to create a synthetic image that can avoid any form of uh, plagiarism or copyright uh, claim or intellectual property uh, problems uh, in the future. So in the technical part, you can use it uh, to actually visualize to other people uh, some scenario that uh, are not present uh, in real world or some scenario that are very difficult to be present or to be photographed in the real world. You can create it create in a synthetic uh, setting so that you can present it to other people. Thank you, sir. Okay, you can join an uh, interactivity over here. Draw a mango and submit the result. Right, okay, for the time being. <laughs> so, the, uh, the one is inside the chat. Uh, also, you can click. So, uh, still open for any Q&A. Uh, Safi, there is some one question. Can you share how to apply this in the medical field? Okay, okay. In the medical field, usually when you look inside the, uh, usually, uh, so I'm not uh, that uh, well versed inside the medical field because I'm not uh, involved in any medical research. But uh, from the visual data set that I've seen uh, in the wild. Uh, from the visual database uh, or from the Kegel or from any visual data set, I've seen that a lot of medical field employ X-ray, okay, X-ray or CT scan or uh, computer uh, tomography scan of uh, certain um, uh, body parts, okay, usually the brains or X-ray of uh, hand, fingers, <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, so, conditional gun can also help in the field, depending on your what your purpose. So, one purpose is that you want to extract the features, right? You want to extract the features, you can use also conditional gun. But you, you must know what you want. So, for our research, we want to imitate how the human um, perceive the damage on the fruit skin. Uh, on a human level, but not uh, through the computer level that count pixel by pixel. But this is not uh, pixel by pixel, but we want to come by uh, to perceive it by area. So another way, uh, it can be uh, implemented on uh, uh, CT scan or computer tomography or X-ray is that sometimes <clears throat> there are certain diseases or cancer cell uh, or uh, cancer lump that may present in the MRI or C uh, CT uh, images. <clears throat> so some of these may present or some of these may not present in the real data. 
real data set. So how are you going to train a new doctors in spotting them if uh, that particular image does not exist in the real world? So um, using the conditional gun, you can draw out uh, an experienced uh, doctors or an experienced expert or a neural surgeon can draw out an outline or create an area that imitates the real world uh, defects that occur inside the CT scan so that it would generate a CT scan that almost look like a real tumor uh, that are growing inside the person. But it's not uh, a real uh, data. It's a synthetic. It can be used as a training tool, right? Training tool. You can simulate that uh, for an X-ray image. You can simulate a bone breaking in a finger. You can simulate uh, uh, a knife going through a person's skull uh, within an X-ray. Things that uh, cannot be created in the real world. You can create it inside uh you, by using conditional gun you can generate it okay generate it it can reimagine or reconstruct the image so that uh it can be used as an educational tool and another thing is that uh the generated image can be used to be fed to another system okay to be fed to another system so that it could be used uh, as a training, okay? Uh, also a training uh, data set so that it could uh, create uh, a more robust uh, deep learning system that can create a more robust uh, classification. So it would not lead to a shortage of data set, especially for defect or you can use it in training in uh, segmentation or object detection and so on. Because, uh, okay, especially through in medical data set, <coughs> It's very difficult to obtain certain type of diseases uh, in the real world. Kan? Even if you can obtain it, sometimes certain patients have uh, that particular defect or diseases uh, or nodules or even cysts in different area of their body. So how to simulate uh, that in the different area of their body inside the CT scan? Yeah, you can uh, you can just uh, create uh, you can just go around and then uh, keep scanning uh, people until they develop one. Yeah, so you can generate it using uh, conditional uh, generative adversary network. <coughs> okay, hopefully that can help in the uh, your concern, Mister Hedi. Asu, alright. So, uh, uh, thank you uh, for the. Thank you for the active participation, uh, particip uh, participation during the interactive activities. And the winner will be announced <laughs> at the end of the sharing session. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Hafiz, for your very interesting and knowledgeable deep learning research sharing regarding the gun. And I would like to open the sharing. Uh, okay, so we already done on the question and answer. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity I would like to promote a hands-on workshop, which is regarding uh, integrating AI and computer vision in IoT. Right, Mr. Fis? Yeah. The planning part is on the third week of March 2023, around 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Location is at Perlis itself, in UITM Perlis. The registration fee is around 350 per person. So you will get a... a Training kits for ESP32 board and also 3D printed housing. Uh, and also the M-Bot CPD hours pending for six hours. Okay, this is the board that I said just now is about the trending part, hands on part. So you will get the uh, the board itself and we will uh, do the hands on part. So later on, uh, I will give you uh, all the participants the link to uh, raise your concern about the workshop itself maybe about the uh, discount or anything. So <laughs> I will give you the link later on. Uh, so Mr. Hafiz, uh, can we go to the second speaker? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to invite our second speaker, which is Dr. Tajo Rosli Raza. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Tajo Rosli Raza is uh, currently working at the University of Technology Mara Perlis branch as a member of faculty and a lecturer. Uh, of the Faculty and Mathematical Science. He received a Bachelor of Information Technology specialing in Artificial Intelligence from UUM, University Utara Malaysia, and Master of Science Intelligence System from University Utara Malaysia also, 
and he then obtained the PhD, his PhD in computer science from the University of Nottingham, United Kingdom. His research interests center around the field of intelligence system, fuzzy logic system, and hierarchy fuzzy system, design support system, and interpretability. Okay, with all due respect, please welcome Dr. Tajul. Okay, Dr. Tajul, the stage is yours. All right, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the moderator, Mr. Nazwan. All right. Uh, thank you as well uh, for Mr. Hafiz for a very interesting uh, presentation. All right. Before I start, I would like to take this, you know, to say thank you to the organizer for this opportunity. So hopefully I can share something to this uh, webinar. <clears throat> can you guys hear my voice? All right. Thank you. All right. So, okay, let's start the sharing session. <clears throat> So today's talk is, uh, I would like to share you know, a little bit about, the title is about Fuzzy Logic System Made Easy with a Fuzzy R Toolbox. Okay, so what is a Fuzzy R Toolbox? Right? So the Fuzzy R Toolbox is a toolbox that we uh, created under the R programming. So hopefully by using this toolbox, we can easily mm, construct a Fuzzy Logic System. All right, so outline for my presentation today, I would like to share a bit about my background, some AI introduction, fuzzy logic system, and some of examples that have been uh, created using fuzzy R toolbox. So I think the background is already uh, introduced by the moderator. Uh, you know, I, <coughs> I did my bachelor and master degree in uh, University of uh, Uttara Malaysia and then a PhD in University of Nottingham. So my research area is on AI, fuzzy system, and decision support system. All right, so let's go to this, uh, before we start to uh, the toolbox, all right? So let's have a look on the you know, state of the arts of AI. So artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? So it's a combination of, uh, artificial plus intelligence okay so we got the ai artificial intelligence so uh, by definition so the ai is intelligent as a bit by machine rather than human or other anymore so in easy word right so the ai artificial intelligence try to mimic how the human give a decision how the human give a reasoning okay? in order to solve the the problem all right so what is ai so, you know, AI, a computer machines, right? Uh, the aim is to solve the problem, all right? Or to give the decision. Uh, like how human give a decision, how humans do a reasoning, right? All right, so, uh, of course, they will require intelligence element. So, they have a lot of time under AI. Okay, for example, my colleagues, uh, Mr. Office already presented about, you know, a bit about a deep learning. So, you know, under branch of AI, they have a lot of things. So, this is some of the example. They do have uh, machine learning, uh, neural networks, robotics, uh, expert system, fuzzy logic system, uh, natural language processing, and also deep learning. So, my presentation is more highlighted on this fuzzy logics, okay? Specifically, how to design the fuzzy logics using the fuzzy R toolbox. So yeah, AI is been popular nowadays. So it has been used in many fields, many areas. For example, uh, healthcare, transportation, education, social media, and etc. So we in our research group, okay, uh, me and also Mr. Hafin, we are under the research interest group, the same. So what we call deep learning group. So we conducted a lot of our AI project. They are you not know, more on predictions, forecasting, medical diagnosis, recommended system, vision support, and intelligence system. So we try, you know, uh, some of our publications, there are various area in education, medicals, agriculture, military, and also etc. All right, so now we are go moving more to fuzzy logic system. I think. Uh, in this uh, webinar, in some of the participants, I think they already well know about fuzzy logic 
system. So let me give some of idea on fuzzy logic system. Maybe some of you not familiar with the fuzzy logic system. All right, so I have a <coughs> journals that publish on this area. If you have uh, interested, so maybe you can have a look on this paper. Okay, so fuzzy logic system okay, become popular in modeling with uncertainty and impression information. You know, when you have uh, some of the issue, the problem that involves is uncertainty. So, you know, fuzzy logic system is good to be to be used in order to solve this uh, problem, right? Here is the you know components under the fuzzy logic system, all right? You know, they have you know we get the this uh, value, this input, and then we pass to the fuzzy component that involve fuzzy fire. We convert the this to the fuzzy sets. And then they have a fuzzy inference that will join together with a rule base. And then from here, they will defuzzify to the end result. They are converted back to Chris output. Here's an example of temperature. You know, in fuzzy logic system, they represent the input into this uh, called membership function or linguistic term. For example, for the case of temperature, so they divided into three categories where there are calls, normals and hot for example okay if uh, the the temperature is uh, 40 so they are fall into the cold okay so we can say that okay with the 40 percent of temperature okay there is a, a cold all right and so on all right and then they have uh, you know falsifications all right in the fuzzy inference implication so they can use either use mean or Max, no, in order to get the final or result, final evolution. All right, I will not go in detail into this uh, fuzzy logic. I will just go surface to give some idea on this fuzzy logic system. So, because of this, you know, fuzzy logic system uh, are good in provides some um, uh, interpretables or interpretability, and also provide a key building blocks. All right. This is because, you know, it is due that when comparing to the black box model, so fuzzy logic is a claim that they are a good in terms of providing some explanation because, you know, in the component of fuzzy logic system, they have uh, clearly very transparent what is happened inside the box. So they claim uh, this is a, a white box, so they are more explainable. All right, so this is to do, you know, in fuzzy logic system, okay, they use the linguistic variables and linguistic rule, okay? Uh, you know, in linguistic variable and linguistic rule, they are very nature, okay? They are more close to the human uh, nature, All right? So it's easy to, to understand. Okay, it's the element how, you know, from fuzzification until the fuzzification, okay? They have three main uh, component, fuzzifications, Inference engines and the falsification. I will not go deep into each of component, but just to tell you, they are here. What happened? So, so we know what happened under uh, in the in the white box of fuzzy uh, system. All right. So I saying about uh, inter uncertainty. So you know, in our life, in real life, we are dealing with a lot of uncertainty. This is example. Okay. Uh, for example, of the age. Okay. Okay, you know, the age is become, you know, every day we come growing, growing, growing. So, for example, what age are you defined old? Okay, what age that we define old, right? Maybe a person A will say, okay, the age, you know, they define the age old is between 50 to uh, 60. Uh, if you're more than 60, maybe you're very old, right? But person A will say that, you know, the old is, the range of old is between, you know, 50 to 60. If we, I if I ask the another person, so they will give a different uh, input as well. If, for example, the person B might say, oh, for the age of old, they, they, they define that between 55 to 65. All right. So they have uh, uncertainty or the subjective uh, uh, answer here. Okay. And if I ask another person, oh, they define uh, the old is in different range. Okay. For example, between 48 to uh, 58, you know, this is just answer that uh, obtained from the three people. So here they have a you know, uncertainty between the answers. So what, how, how, how can we really define? What is the age of to define? Old. So here, the fuzzy logic is very good to capture this uncertainty. You know, 
So we can obtain all the input from three people, okay? So we can get all the uncertainty and then we introduce here is the membership function of to present age of old. So that we, we, we capture the three answer from the uh, uh, participant that given answer of uh, range of old. So here we get the final uh, example, final membership function that will represent old. So the under uh, the orange color we call it uh, FOU, the food of uncertainty. That is under type two fuzzy. No, I just want to show you the example. You know, a simple that how 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 the fuzzy can capture the uncertainty in the real case. All right. So actually, uh, the the talk is more on uh, toolbox, okay, fuzzy toolbox. But before I want to show the fuzzy R toolbox, uh, it is good to you no know, uh show uh, the example of uh you know, fuzzy toolbox in MATLAB. Because uh, the idea is, I think uh, most of people uh, know if we, if you are working on the fuzzy logic system area, uh, I think they are well known about the toolbox under MATLAB, right? So I think it's a it's a good idea to you know to give some uh, brief idea uh, uh, to refresh what is a, a toolbox fuzzy toolbox in MATLAB. So here is a MATLAB uh, interface, uh, Mr. Fis. Can you see the screen? Because I just changed from uh, PowerPoint to the MATLAB. Nazwa? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see. You can All see right. the screen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I just want to demo a bit. Okay, if you want to see the fuzzy R2 book, you have to type fuzzy. And when you click the, you know, enter. So here is the fuzzy logic to box under MATLAB. So they have input. They have uh, Madani rules to how to input the rules, and they also have an output membership function. Okay, it's okay. So I just want to show example of a tipper problem. Okay, tipper problem. If you go to the restaurant and then you 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 order some food, and then how how good do you want to give a tip to that restaurant? All right. So let's see the example of a tipper problem. Here is an example of fuzzy system on tipper problem. Okay, so they have two input, service and food, all right? And then lastly, they want to give, what is the tip to uh, the restaurant, okay? If I double click here, all right? So the tip is, okay, whether the people, the, 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 the customer want to give the tip, whether they are cheap, average or generous, right? Based on uh, the service, Okay, service, whether that restaurant has service, the poor, good, and excellent, and then the food, whether they are resin or delicious. So based on two input, and then they will give uh, you know, the final uh, output, the tips, whether you know, the tip is to give that restaurant chips or average or generous to that uh, waiter or waitress. All right. So here is the fuzzy, uh, fuzzy toolbox in Atlet. I think... Most of people that are working on the fuzzy area, I think uh, they will know the, uh, this interface. This is a fuzzy uh, logic toolbox in MATLAB. Okay, and then you also can make sure the you know rule viewer. For example, if I give the service is, uh, for example, 6.39, and then the food, let's say I give, say, the food is very delicious. So the final tip is between, okay, between, between average and generous here. Yeah. Okay, so if you're looking here, they are more and generous the tip here, right? So the final defazification result is 20.2. This is a fuzzy uh, toolbox in MATLAB again, right? And then you also can see the rule, right? The rule, okay, for example, in this case, they just only have three uh, example of rules, okay? For example, if the service is poor, and a food is a racist, then what is tip want to give? The tip is cheap, right? So they have a three a rule. So the tip example is very uh, basic, very basic that uh, inside the uh, MATLAB, okay? I think some of, you know, in, if you uh, look on the paper, there's some of them just to show the tip problem, just to show very simple example of fuzzy logic. This is all on fuzzy uh, logic toolbox under MATLAB. Okay, I just show to give some idea because later on I will show how
can we easily create also the fuzzy, something like fuzzy toolbox in MATLAB, but we are created in R, under fuzzy R toolbox. All right, so let's get back to uh, this uh, to, uh, presentation. Okay, so some of our demo, again, just to give some, pro some uh, idea on the toolbox in uh, MATLAB. All right, so I think it's good to also introduce now in R, okay? This is R Studio. Okay, if you want to use R, just type in the Google. Okay, there's a very open source. Okay, uh, different between R and MATLAB. MATLAB is a licensed software, so uh, the organization, the company, have to purchase to have a license to use the, the MATLAB. Yes, MATLAB is very powerful, but but you have to to purchase. Here is an open source software, the R uh, programming. Okay, uh, and what I shown in the screen is about. <coughs> The, the R Studio. Okay, you have to install R, and then after that you can install R Studio. This is the interface. Okay, of the R Studio. Okay, on the left here is a console. So for example, let's say I do okay y equal to two. Okay, so they will send the value here in the environment working memory, and then z equal to two. Right. So you can type in the consoles, and they will return the answer here. And then C equal to uh, Y plus Z. Okay, remember? So now C, you got a value of four. This is an R, uh, okay? This is a consoles, and then here's the environment, working environments. So they have history, connection, and also some tutorial, okay, the environment. On the bottom right hand side, so here is a file, plot, package, and so on, okay? So what I want to show is under the R programming, uh, they have a fuzzy R toolbox, okay, a fuzzy logic toolkit for R. Okay, if you click this one, <coughs> but before this, okay, you need to install, okay, you need to install this fuzzy R. Okay, how to install the fuzzy R? All right, if you uh, look it on this R Studio under package, all right, so you can click install. Okay, they will link directly from our repository secret. Secret is all the toolbox and the toolkits under R is uh, embedded into the storage to the C secret, right? It's like a server of R. So you have to type fuzzy R, okay? You can get fuzzy R and then you click fuzzy R and then you click install. For my case, I already installed, right? So I just want to show you guys, this is a fuzzy R. Okay, so in fuzzy R, okay, they have a lot of uh, function function. For example, uh, in this fuzzy R, okay, you also can use Anfis models, okay, how to insert membership function, how to insert rule, how to insert variables, and so on, how to evaluate the fuzzy fees, and so on. Uh, in this fuzzy R also, uh, we created also, we, we provide some of element under ANFIS, okay? Uh, artificial Neural Network plus Fuzzy Logic System. So you can also use Fuzzy R. Here is some description on this Fuzzy R, okay? Uh, the version is now is 2.32, okay? Uh, the author of this package is uh, Chow, is my colleagues, okay? The postdoc in University of Nottingham now. And then John Garibaldi is my supervisor, and also I involve, participate, contribute also in this toolbox. So you can read here some of you know uh, description on this fuzzy R, right? And then you can also uh, you know look it on this website. We provide some example. All right. So uh, just now I show about example of tipple problem using MATLAB. Okay. Here also we do have a tipper uh, in uh, you know in R, right? So this is a tipper problem. Uh, in this example, we can run the example, right? For example, if I copy this one, the code, I click copy, and then I put on the consoles, and then I just click enter. Okay, error in tipper. Could not find function tipper. Why? Because Let's go back to this uh, package. We have to check the fuzzy R. Okay. After I check the fuzzy R, so they include the library of fuzzy R. 
And then now I copy again this code and then I click paste and I click enter. So now uh, we can uh, evaluate this people uh, case problem, All right? How to see it? So I provide uh, in fuzzy R toolbox, okay? One of another special under fuzzy R toolbox. So we provide the GUI, okay? Graphic user interface to uh, to show to to you know to illustrate all this uh, membership function rule base and the falsification as well. Okay, so you can use the show GUI, show GUI function, right? And then I click face. Okay, so here is a uh, interface of uh, now after we created the fuzzy logic system. Uh, type of problem, so we can illustrate it uh, using fuzzy R toolbox using the show GUI uh, function. All right. For example, in this problem as well, they have two input, okay, and then one uh, output, and then the input output they also have service, okay. This is a service membership function for service, for food, and for tips. The same that we try to uh, replicate the, the same uh, case problem, uh, type of problem under the MATLAB. But now we transfer into uh, R toolbox, okay? So we can also visualize the rule base, okay? The rule base, and then also it can be fuzzified. Okay, remember uh, in R, uh, sorry, in MATLAB, okay, I provide example of rule viewer. Okay, if I, okay, this is a rule viewer in, uh, MATLAB, but also in R, we do have something like this. Okay, we call evalfish. Okay, let's give some uh, example. Let's say here we give uh, a service 5.5. So I created 5.5, something like that. Okay, uh, and then the food we give, uh, I don't know, 7799. 799. Okay. Okay, so they give the same uh, result. Okay, 19.3. This is because uh 7.9, this 5.58. No, they have uh, two decimal place. Here I just put one decimal place. But look at on this uh end result, the physication. So they give the same uh, result. Okay. And also for the case of, you know, you want to download this uh, plot, so we can also uh, download it, uh, export into the PDF, right? Okay. The same with the membership function, we also can uh, download the plot. Okay. It's a very nice plot that we can put uh, into our... Yeah, okay, all right. I think, all right. So here is the, the example on uh, Fuzzy R toolbox. Okay. But also we provide some of extra, for example, I call Tipper 2, a Tipper GUI 2, GUI, GUI 2, right? Just to show you some of example, another example of fees. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, in the tipper two, uh, I just want to you know to modify that you know in membership function. If you want to learn about fuzzy, okay. So we, for example, if I this is the membership using a trapezoid. So this is a Gaussian. And then this is a triangular. For the case of you, if you want to learn, okay? For example, if I choose Gaussian and I want to modify the pool, uh, you know, the, the linguistic term pool, so if I click here, you know, they will dynamically change the result, okay? This is just a matter of you want to learn how exactly graph, if you put sum of mean and spread, how, how to generate. So. In this example, also we provide, okay, and then you can change, for example, to triangle, trapezoid, and triangular. We just take a three uh, membership function example. All right, so uh, you can have a look. 
okay, try and error, you know, just a very uh, interesting and dynamic. All right. Okay. All right. I think there is uh, some of, you know, basics uh, in, uh, sorry, in fuzzy tool, R toolbox. Okay. So maybe you can, you know, uh, have a look on this uh, R toolbox. Okay. Fuzzy logic toolkit, we call because they have a lot of function that you can use, right? In fact, you can use the Enfish. Sometimes we use Enfish together, you know, uh, to do the optimizer and everything. You can uh, have a look in this one. And then we create also fuzzy accuracy, okay? Using the fuzzy accuracy, you fuzzy accuracy, you can uh, simply uh, check the accuracy. For example, all right? For example, if I click here, copy, and then in R, they have an example. So you can uh, copy and put in the console and then you have, can try, have a look at this uh, result. Okay. In the fuzzy accuracy, you don't need to uh, worry about uh, what is the MAE, RSMAE, MASE and everything. So they have a lot, they have, uh, I think, eight uh, uh, error uh, evolution here, right? Okay. There is a little bit on fuzzy R in R programming. Okay, let's go to the my slide. All right. So okay, I, I show some of you know uh, to get a feel about what is a fuzzy R, what is a toolbox fuzzy toolbox in MATLAB, what is a fuzzy R in R. Okay, they actually they are the same, but you can have a choice. Okay, if you want to use MATLAB or if you want to use uh, fuzzy R, fuzzy R is uh, under programming R, open source software, you know, in MATLAB, you have to have a license and, and you know, in order to use that. Okay, here is an example that I created some of Fuzzy using Fuzzy R toolbox and already published. Okay, here is an example of Iris Flower. All right, so under Fuzzy, they have a lot of toolkit or toolbox. Uh, just now I show about the Fuzzy toolbox in MATLAB. And most of them is to create a Fuzzy Logic system. It's a bit, uh, in this paper, we also say, show the step-by-step -step how to also you can design another fuzzy, they call hierarchical fuzzy system. Okay, here is a fuzzy to work. Just now I show what is the interface of fuzzy R uh, in R programming. Okay, so my definition is uh, fuzzy R is an open source software based on R programming language. They offer ability to design the standard of fuzzy logic system. So the toolbox is already presented also in this uh, conference, Fuzzy XP conference 2020. Uh, if you want to look detail on that explanation, maybe you can have a look on this paper. So why I open the Fuzzy R toolbox in MATLAB? Because in Fuzzy R, the common line, the interface is quite close to uh, MATLAB Fuzzy Logic toolbox. So if you are familiar with the fuzzy logic toolbox in MATLAB, so it will be easier for you to uh, also use the fuzzy R in fuzzy R programming. Okay, all right. So this uh, fuzzy R toolbox, toolkit toolbox, okay, is already, uh, you, you, you can uh, download this one uh, under this URL. Okay, here is how to design fuzzy R. Okay, for the system using fuzzy R. So for the case of iris classification problem, so we have four input and then we have one output. Okay, separ length, separ width, peta length, peta width, right? So here is our case study. So we would like to design uh, in fuzzy R, right? So uh, I just show the code, code, some coding, okay? Step one, step two, until so on. Okay, uh, in R programming, all right, so first step is you have to load the library, okay, library, fuzzy R. Okay, step two, you need to initial, okay, initiate the fuzzy model, okay, using this uh, function, a new fish, right? Uh, don't worry about it, we, okay, we, I can share the slide after this. Okay, after you uh, create the fuzzy fish, fuzzy model, so next step, Step three is you have to create input output variable. Okay, for example of this iris, so the input will be for input. Okay, so for length, so for width. Okay, then the output is flower. Okay, and then you have to also set what is their 
uh, minimum and maximum value of this membership. Okay, and this is very more. Right, and then step three, step four, you have to create membership function for input and output variable. Okay, using this app MF. Okay, if you look it on the fuzzy R, can okay, I show you just now? They have a lot of function, so I highlighted only what is function. Okay, for example, for create input output, you have to use add var function. If you want to use, uh, if you want to create membership function, so you need to use add MF function. Right. For example, input small, this small, and then this a medium, and then this is a, a large. Okay, you know in MATLAB, uh, sorry in fuzzy R, uh, you can also drag and drop. Okay, to get what is the exactly value. All right, just now, and then yeah, step five is create the rule. Okay, create the rule is something very similar to uh, MATLAB. I think maybe MATLAB is the interface is very nice, but you know, if you have a code in MATLAB, actually you can transform into uh, fuzzy R. It's very easy because they have the same structure. So you need to add the fuzzy rule using add rule function. Okay, here is for example, again, one, 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 what is the meaning? Okay. If the supply line is small and supply width is small and Pata length is small and pata width is small, then, okay, then the flower is Sentosa. That is the meaning of one, 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 okay. And then step six, you also can evaluate, okay, evaluate the fish fuzzy inference system that has been created for this iris. And, okay, to use this, you we may use the, the function of eval fish, okay. Let's say what is the value that we want to evaluate we can give to the this function or we can use the slide okay slider uh, using the GUI function and then yeah the last after you completed the code and then you can uh, evaluate using or illustrate it using the the GUI okay here just now uh, the example of iris okay here is a membership function here is their fuzzy rules and here is a evolution fuzzy inference system, right? So now is another type of fuzzy. It's called hierarchical fuzzy system. So they will decompose, okay, the standard fuzzy into the several of subsystem subsystem. Okay, uh, by general, if we use the hierarchical fuzzy system, so we can reduce the number of rules. Okay, look at on this example from eighty one. And then we can obtain 27. So the complexity is now slash because the number of rule is slash. So that's why uh, some uh, researchers claim that you know it's good to use the HFS because you know it has advantage to reduce uh, the number of rule and consequently the complexity. All right. <coughs> okay. In order to use this, I will go. You know they use the same function with uh, using the same uh, fuzzy system okay but now they have to create for individual subsystem right uh, and then the the rule is now become small because you know every each subsystem only have two input and one output two input and one output so the rule now become uh, less okay in compared to the standard fuzzy all right uh, okay step one creating the individual subsystem Okay, me for the hierarchical. And then now we have to load. <coughs> okay, for example, if we have three, if we have three uh, subsystem, so now we have to combine all together. Okay, uh, in this case, I show, uh, I add the library of Shiny because I want to show it using the GUI. And then I have to load, combine all three together because they have fuzzy subsystem one, subsystem two, and subsystem three and then we have to uh, put all together combine all the subsystem and then we can get all the membership function rules and we could also evaluate three uh, individual subsystem okay here i just copy the interface and not showing uh, the real in fuzzy R. okay just to give the idea how do we uh, create the hierarchical using fuzzy R. All right, so the input of output of the HFS, our system, we can also 
uh, visualize using this uh, control surface. But for this case, they can only visualize two input and one output. You cannot uh, give three input because they cannot general, they cannot visualize this graph uh, using three input. They need to use only two input and one output. All right. So uh, the code, because I just go very fast, but we already published the code, okay, for subsystem one, subsystem two, subsystem three, uh, in this uh, condition, okay. Condition is the platform where we can share our coding, okay, our code, okay, and then there has a lot of uh, engine, whether you want to use in R, Python, uh, MATLAB, and so on. So now, if you are interested to try an error using our code, you can. Uh, have a look on this uh, condition. Okay, here is the the link. Right. Okay. The last example. Okay. Uh, we okay. Just now I show example. Uh, how we create uh, fuzzy uh, for Iris uh, application. Okay. Another example. Okay. Uh, this paper also presented uh, in this uh, this year. Okay. In July. All right. So how to model a hierarchical fuzzy system using uh, for mango grading using fuzzy R. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a case of study. Okay. Uh, if you we'll have uh, this picture, okay, I think uh, this is easy to uh, to classify for the grade A. Okay, looking by by looking on this picture, also for the grade C. Okay, but however, in the between here for a uh, grade B, so they have some uncertainty to to decide okay what is a grade b whether this one can be grade c or whether this one can also uh stated for the grade a so because of this case study okay we also ask a few experts okay expert here is we define because they have experience okay they have a not mango farm and also working on this area so we get we give the same uh you know uh mango Okay, and then we bring to expert one, expert B, expert C, and expert four. Okay, we give them to rate just by looking on this picture. Okay, to feel and get to get the texture, and then to give the grade. Okay, or okay, this is the the case study of you know we we test with four expert. They also have a subjective view of uh, answer. Okay, this is because of the uncertainty because you know human they have a how they perceive. Is a difference between expert one, expert two. Although, okay, although we do have like uh, organization something like you know, in Malaysia we have pharma, okay, that uh, control the grade. So we already have some grade, but when we ask the expert, okay, the answer might have uh, a subjective view in their answer. Okay, we already have some. Uh, you know, we publish also this paper of uh, you know how to capture grading from a human expert in this uh, last year paper. So, you know, in this, we just uh, to show how can we get the answer from people, get a survey of the 11th uh, mango, and then we can get uh, for each of these uh, expert can, we will have a different uh, answer for the size, color, and skin, and the grade. And then uh, we also uh, access how uh, expert different from expert one, expert two for each input variable. For the case of Mango, they just only have three input. Okay, they have size, color, and and skin. Okay, for now, from here, okay, from this fuzzy logic, this, the standard fuzzy. Now I want to do the hierarchical. Okay, so now they have three input: size, color, and skin. Now the subsystem one only have a size and color input, okay? And then the skin will go to the another subsystem and the last one is a grading. Here is a membership function, okay? For the size example, there is a rule based for a uh, physiology system. For example, if size is small and then the color is uh, A poor and then Y1, we give Y1 is ABC. So ABC will stand for, you know, uh, by combined size and color. So what is a category? Whether they are A is a good, B, uh, medium, and then C is a bad. So we, we just put A, B, C, D, all right? And then they have two different uh, role base. Okay. Uh, also, we can evaluate the fuzzy inference with uh, FIS using the fuzzy R, all right? And then, since we already have a result from the expert, okay, 
and then we also have a result in our fuzzy R. So we want to see, okay, uh, standard fuzzy and hierarchical fuzzy. Okay, which one is you know uh, very close to uh, uh, expert? How expert give the grade? Okay, based on this study, okay, we can see that you know HFS okay will give a less error. Okay, in comparing with you know the standard fuzzy for the mango grading case. Okay, right. And also we look it on the another angle. Okay, that one is accuracy, but now it is uh, interpretable. How close? Okay, how 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 easy we can understand the fuzzy system? Okay, fuzzy system or hierarchical fuzzy system. So since we already have uh, you know indices that we presented in the paper, okay, we introduce the indices just to measure the interpretability of fuzzy system. Okay, so based on this, we we access the fuzzy standard fuzzy and hierarchical fuzzy for the mango grading cases. So for the higher is we say the higher is a better, is a is a more interpretable. More interpretable here is, for example, the number of rules. Okay, for HFS is very less compared to the uh, fuzzy logic system. So when we put this indices and measure to the fuzzy logic system and our system, so we obtain that uh, HFS is better than FLS for the case of mango grading uh, example. All right. So I think uh, that is my sharing on fuzzy logic system, that how we can generate the fuzzy logic system using a fuzzy R to box, okay? Yes, obviously this is just a surface, okay? Maybe later on, if you guys are interested to, to use this fuzzy R, maybe later on, you know, uh, maybe you guys can contact me and then maybe we can collaborate in future and try to, if you have a case study, and then we can try to, you know, uh, create a fuzzy logic system, maybe using fuzzy R. Right. With that, I think, uh, thank you very much all for uh, interested. If you have uh, any question regarding my presentation, yes, you can uh, ask me. Maybe I can pass to the moderator. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the very interesting and knowledgeable uh, fuzzy system research sharing. Uh, I would like to open the sharing session now with Dr. Dajul. If there is any question from the participants, uh, from the audience itself. So I just open first. If anyone to have any question for Dr. Tajul. So Dr. Tajul, uh, meaning that the R2 just now, uh, you developed with your team, right? At the Nottingham? Yes. Yes, Nazwan. That's really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. can see our name there is, wow. That's very wow. <laughs> yeah, because I think I, I'm very lucky because mm. when I start my PhD with my supervisor, John Garibaldi, they are also working on this uh, toolbox. Okay, uh, actually, this toolbox is not uh, my my final uh, you know a PhD, but it's very interesting to have you know a uh, very good experience for me to to have this uh, you know kind of you know to participate in this uh, toolbox because later on. We can use in future, okay. On the other researcher also can use this toolbox. Uh, in fact, uh, my study also uh, one of example. I use uh, this toolbox to demonstrate my case study. That's really good. That's really great. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the attendance link also I provide in the chat box. So uh, for the e certificate, you must uh, fill up of the. Uh, attendant list. Uh, okay. So, is there any other question? I think uh, we shall continue, uh, Doctor. So, we will go to the uh, announcing the winner and all the. Oh, sorry, Doctor. There is one. Uh, there is one question from Shafiq. Salam, Doctor. Can the toolbox detect the type of mango? Okay, all right. Uh, like Harumanis or other mango. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shafiq, for the question. Okay, I have experience uh, working on this toolbox. Okay, my toolbox is to identify the grade. Okay, the grade of mango, whether the grade is uh, A, B, or C. Okay, for this case study, because my data, my rule base is more on 
the final result is to, to identify a grade A or B or C. Okay, uh, your, your question is about uh, whether we want to detect the type of mango. Okay, so maybe we need to create another who base okay, with the expert with the certain attribute. And then with certain attribute, we can detect what type of uh, mango, whether they are sala, whether they are aromanes and so on. So maybe, uh, yes, the, the, the answer is now, yes, we can. But now we have to identify what is the good, the, all the parameter, the general parameter that we need to give to the fuzzy system in order uh, to let the fuzzy detect what is a type of mango. So the parameter, I mean, the parameter could be maybe a size, a color, and maybe we can add another uh, parameter in order to really detect what type of uh, mango, whether they are harumanes or whether they are sala, whether they are the chokanak and so on. Is it answering your, your question, uh, Shafi? Okay. So uh, we come back with the, uh, just now, uh, we're promoting the hands-on workshop, Integrating AI and Computer Vision in IOP. So this is the, uh, we want to know how many of you is interested on this hands-on uh, workshop. So we would like to have uh, your feedback or your concern regarding the workshop that we can prepare and we can uh, give a very good experience on the workshop part. So uh, you can scan the QR code to answer the concern or you may, may I give the link in the chat box also. So uh, maybe uh, Mr. Hafiz want to add on some uh, something on the workshop part? Okay, uh, actually we are planning to do a face-to-face -face hands-on work workshop in integrating artificial intelligence <clears throat> and computer vision in uh, Internet of Things. So, so this will be uh, uh, a workshop that have hands-on, face-to-face, uh, closely related with um, instructors uh, guiding you. So the AI will be integrated with, uh, would be a computer vision AI. So we will be using TensorFlow Lite and TensorFlow as well as integrating it with a web uh, system. So we will be having a part uh, with hardware part and then the software part and then also the network part. So it will, it will be a very wholesome uh, workshop, uh, one day workshop. Uh, we some minimal coding uh, and then we will be uh, giving you with a training kit uh, uh, that is ESP32 board uh, together with 3D printed housing so you can uh, build a professional looking um, computer vision project uh, with IoT so uh, so the registration fee currently is set at uh, $350 per person and this would include um, uh, the certificate uh, and also the kit. Okay, You do not have to bring anything, uh, the kit will be uh, provided to you, the hardware kit including the housing and the materials and then we will also be uh, providing uh, uh, the breakfast and then also the lunch uh, set. Uh, and so on. So we have uh, a pending uh, uh, and bought uh, CPD hours, uh, six hours. So if you are um, interested, you can register your interest uh, for the sense on workshop that will be uh, conducted in uh, UITM Chawangan Perlis uh, Computer Labs. So I think that's all. Um, uh, hopefully we will be having fun uh, integrating AI, uh, very practical and use um, uh, about uh, as minimal code as uh, we can. Right, uh, I think we pass it back to the moderator. Okay, thank you, Safi. <coughs> okay, uh, so now is the time that we are waiting for. Uh, the time to announce the winner of the interactive uh, activities in the sharing session number one. So the prize is... Uh, we give 50 ringgits for each winner. Yeah, it's 50 ringgit for each winner. So, uh, without further <laughs> ado, the winner are uh, the six people, Iliana Muhammad Ali, Shafika Hasim, Eddie H, Zhang Lifan, Alia Fatini Muhammad Sofi, Dian Pratama. So, all these people, we have the email address. So, we will contact all of you uh, this week. Uh, through your email okay, for the price. All right. So uh, now we have the winner. We come to the end of the sharing session. Before we leave, I would like to have uh, to make uh, two special requests uh, for the organi uh, organizer. Uh, the first one, uh, please fill up the attendance list 
for your yeah. e-certificate from this sharing session. And uh, we're going to have an online photography session. Okay. So, uh, therefore, uh, I would like to request and kindly uh, request from your side to open your web camera and ready to take picture with us. Is it okay? All right. So, uh, hopefully you can turn on your camera. Then I can take your picture together with us. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Nazwan, maybe you can yes. stop sharing because ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I the whole, uh, no, screen. Understood, understood. Uh, yes. In my count, all right. In my count, one, two, three. <laughs> Uh, give me a moment. I save first. We take another one. Okay, one more time. Okay, look into the camera. One, two, three. 